Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. We're here for Unspun episode 129. We're going to be discussing werewolves, witches, and vampires, mostly werewolves tonight. We're going to be tying it together with the previous shows on uh, vampires that Caleb and I did, as well as the Salem and witchcraft shows that Holly and I have done uh, for months back. And uh, a lot of material to cover tonight, uh, a lot of interesting tie-ins between vampires and werewolves and witches. And uh, like usual, you know, the opposite of what we've been told is true. There's definitely some truth to uh, the history of werewolves, not really how it's presented in the movies and Hollywood scene and all of that. But they're uh, just like with vampires, there is uh, underlying truth to the whole thing. Thank you, Anthony, for the uh, five dollars there. And uh, just like we showed with the Salem witch trials and all of those shows that we've done this year, <clears throat> for those of you who want to go into the... Uh, archives and check those out with Holly and I, you know, it shows that the witchcraft is real and that everything that we've been told about Salem and everything is, is spun the opposite. The Purit Puritans were not Christians. The, the spell was cast against the Christians. And you find out that the only people who put, were put to death were those who denied being witches, etc. But uh, so Caleb is back with me tonight. Welcome back, Caleb. And uh, thanks to everyone who uh, has supported the show. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, somebody, Martin, sent me a letter this week with a check in it and wanting me to contact him. He included his email address and a website. I could barely read your, hand, uh, your handwriting, so I apologize for not getting back to you sooner. If you could write me back because I couldn't read your email address, I would appreciate it, Martin. So thank you for that. And uh, yes, uh, Natty Nasty says boycott Halloween, everyone. I agree with that. Uh, Halloween is a ritual where the, the Satanists and the witches and the vampires, etc., all mock our credulity and go about with our children, taking people up to doors, begging for candy, where they, you know, use the symbolism of the Puritan hat and the and the witch's cauldron, uh, which is the symbol of how they made the poisons and things like that to create the plagues with, that they used to commit mass genocide with. So, uh, you know, again, we've shown all of that history. So if you haven't seen the shows on Salem, obviously we did them throughout the year rather than this month, but it was just so much material that Holly and I went through. But check those shows out. And, uh, you know, also study the shows that Caleb and I did last week on vampires that lead into this and show that all of this stuff is real. But what they taught us about something like dinosaurs, Caleb and I and Stephen did a show on dinosaurs on uh, Sunday showing how that's a hoax. So, you know, <clears throat> we were taught to believe in dinosaurs as kids, that those are real, but witches, vampires and werewolves are fake. And so we've shown how the witches are real and all of that and the, and the vampires. So anyway, I'm going to pass it over to Caleb and uh, let Caleb dig in with some of his research, and then we'll just pass it back and forth. Take it away, Caleb. Uh, you know what? Hold on a second. I've got the audio set wrong. Sorry, folks. Good grief. Check, check. Can you hear me? That should be working now. Is that Sorry. working for you guys? Do you hear me? I can hear you fine. but Now I'm not we... hearing you, so that's not working great. Testing. Well, I'll just have to do it the other way, so sorry. Is that working? All right. Well, we're just I'll just have to do it this way because I'm not hearing myself in the headphones. So something's going on with it. All right. We'll just keep going with it this way. Hopefully it hopefully the audio isn't too uh, messed up. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. I 
go back to the bigger thoughts, but like what I really particularly that I was talking about really was to kind of shift it into like a clinical uh, space too, so I can kind of tie in my research. So there's uh, a whole bunch of like where they say they can't hear you now. Shit. Well, you know what? I probably was stupid and didn't plug my headphones in. That's what the problem was. Sorry, folks. Now you guys should be able to hear Caleb. Caleb is low, they said. All right, there hear. you go. Now everything should be all right. Is that better? Yeah, okay. sorry. When I plugged it in, my stupid headphones weren't plugged in. That's uh, brilliant. How's that, chat? Is that a little better? I'm sure that's got to be perfect now. Okay, cool. Say, okay, got it. All right. So uh, what I was saying was, um, I think it's important to differentiate between uh, uh, some of the negatively portrayed uh, wolf and where uh, more of the man wolf relationship that the northern tribes have had, uh, specifically like the, the northern Slavs, the Scythians, the Goths, the Norse, Scandinavian, the Rus, um, the old uh, tribes that were always associated in the north with uh, the wolves. And they were always uh, holding that as a uh, spiritual animal and um, a re the relationship between the man and the wolf and the dog uh, was a very tight uh, uh, notion. And we, we can begin to see as I give some of this grammar that uh, that gets attacked in, in specific ways by groups that do not like these northern tribes um and you'll start to see the same um ideas pop up from the past shows that we've been talking about where um christians get attacked quite a bit as well and that also ties the northern tribes together if you're into the fomenko stuff with uh, the new chronology and how he kind of talks about how all these slavic scythian goths the north scandinavian the Rus. These were actually Christian nations as opposed to the pagans that they portray them as. So uh, that's interesting. Um, but and then uh, the on the other side of the, the coin is the, the there's certain groups that will show were causing almost like the first uh, false flags, if you want to put it that way, um, where they were dressing up like wolves and killing people and uh, for various notions probably a lot of it had to do with uh, fear striking fear in people blaming the people of the wolf probably was another uh, reason why uh, these these things took place a lot of times cannibalism and uh, people um, probably on drugs uh, uh, we'll get more into that uh, but just to kind of start with um, I think it's interesting to talk about these these cases in Germany and France in the around 15, I think 1521 is when they start and they go all the way to the 1700s um, where you find these attacks being talked about in the uh, newspapers and in the history of the medieval times. Um, and, the, and we'll start to tie some of the... Uh, reoccurring themes back uh, full circle so we can kind of get the the bigger picture here and see what's really taking place um so in in 1589 in germany uh the most famous werewolf trial on record is that of peter stump he was a german farmer accused of werewolvery along with witchcraft and cannibalism known as the werewolf of bedbury he confessed to multiple accounts of murder, rape, and cannibalism. It must be said that his confession came after being tortured, so we can't truly know for sure if he had committed such heinous crimes. He could have been mad or a delusional serial killer. Now, one interesting thing to note about this character when you're looking into this is that, uh, let me pull it up here. I'm so showing this, uh, I'm showing some stuff on screen, but yeah, I can switch for you there. So this guy, let me see Peter Stump here. Well, while you, so, you got it, yeah. So Peter Stump, um, 
so he says, uh, so children's began to disappear from their farms and homes. So uh, again, we see the same thing we talked about with the vampires. It's these young children. And, and the same thing in the Salem witch trials. Uh, yep. Young women vanished from the paths as they traveled daily. Some were found dead, horribly mutilated. Others were never found. The community was thrown into a panic. Hungry wolves were again suspected as the villagers armed themselves against the animals. Um, so one interesting thing in the story, I can't read the whole entire thing, but one interesting thing in this case as well, uh, although he did not literally transform into a wolf, Peter Stubb would cloak himself with the skin of a wolf when seeking his victims. Okay, so he's wearing a wolf skin. Uh, at his trial, Stubb confessed that the devil himself gave him the magic belt of wolf fur at age 12. And when he put it on, it transformed him. Yeah, and when you look into one of the ways to become a werewolf, it says you wear the belt made of, of human skin or created by a witch or whatever. And I think it's made of human skin. Exactly. And uh, one other reference that's interesting. Um, he was a... Um, he was a Protestant, right? So interesting that during all these religious wars, uh, the Reformation, the period of, of the, the churches all uh, splitting up, the Orthodox Church splitting into all these different denominations. Uh, we, we've linked this before, but a lot of the ref, reformers and the Protestants, so when you think of Protestant, um, think of protest these guys are protesters they're protesting the original orthodox christianity and they want to make it something different and what they're making it into is uh, more of a it, very close to like a rabbinical uh judaism type of christianity and a lot of the quote unquote jews um were a part of the reformation and they were you know they were uh, on the Protestant, the protesting side. Think of E. Michael Jones's book, uh, uh, what is it, uh, The Jewish Revolutionary Spirit. Uh, it's, the, it's this reoccurring thing that happens, the protesters, the revolving door of protesting uh, for reform. Revolution, that's a circle. Exactly. So um, let's see, what else? Okay, so in France in 1521, uh, Pierre Bergeau and Michael Verdun were two French peasants accused of killing and eating several men and women. Their trial received widespread notoriety. Um, historical records indicate that they were most likely a serial killer team. Um, and which one were they? Michael Verdun? Michael Verdun and okay. Pierre Bergeau. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. I got them. Hard to find a lot of information on these guys. Um, there's uh, not even a lot on Wikipedia and stuff, but uh, there were some books written. Um, a book was called War Werewolves, Fable or Fiction by Michael Lynn. I found a little bit of references. Somebody's in there. saying they're not getting your. Oh, OK. Everybody else is saying it's fine. So somebody was saying they weren't getting your audio. That must have been back at the beginning for a minute. OK. Yeah. Let me know. They're if probably that... in the delay. They're probably watching it from the start or something. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, yeah, not a, not a ton is known, but I do have some uh, information on that. I'll have to possibly link that for people to look more into. Um, and then and then there is in 1573 uh, in France, Guy Garnier, known as the Werewolf of Dole, was a confessed serial killer. He had killed and eaten the flesh of several children. When on trial, he tried to put the blame on the devil. This didn't win any of uh, win him any favors, though, as he was burnt at the stake. Uh, and this guy's information is interesting. Um, let me uh, screen share this so you, people can see. Yeah, All I right. want to go into some of these too. We should bounce back and forth. And oh, okay, I got that same article up on my side. So. Yeah. So uh, so this guy's story is really super interesting as well. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this all goes hand in hand, which we're going to talk about even further a little bit later. He was found guilt, guilty of lycanthropy and witchcraft. A lot of the same witchcraft stuff from uh, Holly and Jan's work 
all the a lot of these motives pop up. Another thing that these guys and say a lot of these guys say in their trials is that they have a um, salve. They have some sort of a salve that they can put on. And um, I was kind of highlight that uh, where it says that. Um, yeah, I'll look for that. You just uh, a- you just had it a second ago. You were right over top of it, and you moved your page. Anyway, so, that's all right. So, Go ahead. So the salve is really interesting because uh, uh, one thing that you'll read about when you're interested in the werewolf phenomena, you'll read uh, certain cases where uh, I'll just read th- these two real quick. A recent theory has been proposed to explain werewolf episodes in Europe in the 18th and 19th century. Ergot, ding, 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 which causes a form of blood, uh, of foodborne illness is a fungal, a fungus that grows in place of rye grain and the wet growing seasons after a very cold winter. Ergot poison usually affects whole towns and or least poor areas of towns and results in hallucinations, mass hysteria, paranoia, as well as convulsions and sometimes death. LSD can be derived from ergot. Ergot poisoning has been proposed as both a cause of individual believing that he or she is a werewolf and of a whole town believing that they had seen a werewolf. However, this theory is controversial. Okay, and the reason why uh, I brought that up... Let's uh, kill the share on that and let's both go into this some more. Uh, yeah, the the reason why I brought that up is because uh, Jan was actually sh- showing how in uh, previous shows that the ergot was actually uh, used in the as a scapegoat to uh, kind of explain away a lot of the motifs that they were blaming uh, witchcraft on, and it ended up being a, a little bit deeper. But I, I thought it was interesting that they're talking about solves, they're talking about mass hallucinations of these people thinking that they're werewolves um could they be rubbing could these solves be some right. sort of hallucinogen That's but, but what they what every and you see the exact same pattern with the werewolves and with the vampires that we saw with the uh, salem witch trial stuff uh you see them admitting that they're using salves you see them admit that there were baby you know child killings and things like that as if you know that stuff doesn't happen today as if we don't have pedophiles and predators out there today your jeffrey dahmers and whatnot out there today but you see the same thing each time these people will admit what they do and then they spin it and blame the christians as you know just oh you well you know they were you know, uh, Christians. So therefore, you know, these poor, you know, these people, these were poor victims of Christian fanaticism. Right. And so, you know, this is the spin every single time, you know, Christians, they're just stupid. You know, they believe in truth is God and we're just going to attack it and ridicule everything, everything throughout the narrows. We're going to flip against Christians. So you see it with the Salem witch trials every single time you see it. And never mind that the Puritans were Jewish. They were uh, crypto Jews, uh, Puritan from Purim out of the book of Esther, which I've been arguing for many months now. And I think that I have a lot of evidence to support that theory. But uh, they were crypto Jews and then they would do this stuff. And, and they were, it was the Hebrew Republic of Massachusetts, if that doesn't tell you enough. And they followed the Tenach, the first five books of the uh, Old Testament, and they just put on a cloak of Christianity. And then whenever they did wrong, whenever they created a plague, whenever they massacred the Indians, the Christians took the blame for it. And then after the Puritans were done with all of this, they just quit being Puritans and they became Quakers and Congregationalists and Unitarians and and whatnot. So then they just disappeared off and pretended, or they went back to being Jews and pretend, you know, pretended that uh, it was all the Puritans' fault, so they just erased the Puritans after the whole thing was over. And uh, so, you know, we see the exact same thing happening, and uh, I forget the woman now, uh, let me see, Ergot and Salem, but she, you know, and I have the book upstairs, uh, but, uh, you know, so she writes this theory of Ergot and uh, the Salem witch trials, and it's a total misdirection. And when you actually go in and you start mapping all of this stuff, uh, let's see, ergotism. Uh, this might be it. Mary Kilborn Matosian. Yeah, that's her. So, you know, and this is from the 
uh, Salem Museum in uh, in uh, Salem, Massachusetts. This is up on the wall from her. And uh, the, the theory is complete nonsense. It's one of the weakest theories I've seen, but it uses a lot of the same rhetoric. Oh, well, you know, oh, they were, they were victims of ergotism. And so the whole town, you know, it was ergot and the whole town just, it was all their Christian fanaticism. And, and so we have to blame the Christians. And not only that, you know, um, you know, they were suppressing the women. So they always throw in the feminist agenda. And, you know, there's actually a blueprint that I've laid out that they uh, use uh, for these attacks. So it's the exact same thing that they use with werewolves as well, create this false theory. With Salem, we discovered that it was uh, mercury cinnabar. Uh, cinnabar is mercury ore. And uh, they would use this and they would create poisons uh, and potions. They would put it in the water supply, put it wherever. And this was how they were dis distributing this stuff and through the underground tunnels that run all over the East Coast, the real underground railroads that they were actually trafficking humans through too, including the, the slaves were going through there. It wasn't them just feeling the north side of the of the tree moss and going through the forest. That's nonsense. They were actual tunnels, actual underground railroads. And <clears throat> so all of this stuff is going on in Salem. But, you know, you have all of these, uh, for lack of a better term, Satan worshipers, and they're doing these anti-Christian spells and blaming the Christians. And Cotton Mather was uh, a self, at least a self-proclaimed rabbi, and uh, he wore a yarmulke, and, you know, that's cited in a number of books. And, you know, uh, many of the other people in that whole region that were involved in this, it was, it was a commonwealth. That's another name for communism. Communism, of course, is typically a Jewish thing, like, you know, from Karl Marx and many of the others. But um, so the Aragot comes up from her, and I wouldn't be surprised if she was the one that put forth the werewolf Aragot theory. Carl Ruck, uh, years ago, whom I had on the show, he was episode number one, and I since figured out that he was working with the CIA with uh, Gordon Wasson on MKUltra Subproject uh, 58. But uh, he wrote a book with, or not with Gordon Wasson, but uh, he did actually write books with Gordon Wasson, excuse me. But this particular book, he wrote about six or eight years ago, uh, arguing that Amanita muscaria and uh, some other drugs were probably involved in werewolfism. But as I go through all of this stuff, uh, I am finding, and here is Carl Ruck here, I am finding uh, that the ergot and whatnot is likely a cover-up for two other things. We, uh, one we discussed last week, which is adrenochrome. And uh, let me just get that up here. So here we have the adrenochrome thing again connecting to Oh, to the werewolf lycanthropy issue here. Um, and so with the vampires, like we discussed last week, we suspect that people were getting high by uh, taking these these drugs. Uh, or not this drug. It's Well, it is a drug. They purify it, but it's, it's, a, it, it's the oxidase of adrenaline. And so when you drink somebody's blood filled with adrenaline because you're murdering them or bleeding them out, they freak out and it creates a drug called adrenochrome, which is very similar in chemical makeup to mescaline. And it uh, makes people go into a frenzy, which may be where the berserker craze uh, that's supposedly attributed to the Norse, the Vikings or whatever, which may be totally false, where that probably comes from. But that's probably where it comes from in vampirism, which I went through and read the Bible citations in the last uh, two shows on this. So... I recommend people checking out those shows because I'm not going to go back through all those citations, all of the Old Testament citations about uh, not drinking blood and why and being banned. So you have these two opposing views, essentially, between the vampires and the werewolves. And Caleb has more on this to go into as well. But with the blood idea from the Bible, so the Bible says don't drink the blood. And then it also says you can eat any of the... Uh, animals that are on your property or whatever and so 
But eating or eating or drinking the blood is absolutely forbidden because that is the life force when the blood leaves, the creature dies. And so you cannot drink the blood and you have to pour it out on the ground and bury it, cover it with dust or whatever, because that is the life force. And so the vampires, they just re invert that being the Satanist they are. And they say, ha ha, we're going to drink blood. OK, so these are people that ritualistically drink blood and they get high off of this stuff. And so they're getting high off of adrenochrome. Now, the other possible explanation, which I'm going to pull up here, is uh, the Kuru virus, which is a disease that is caused by uh, cannibalism. And, you know, so people with Kuru, they have they get mental disorders. Their bodies uh, tend to fail to function properly, et cetera. But that's a result of cannibalism. Uh, some people have suggested that uh, Hillary Clinton may have Kuru from all of this kind of stuff. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's what it was, but right now it's just speculation. They're not going to let us know, but uh, Kuru is another definite possibility of the going uh, crazy and, and kind of losing your brain on this sort of stuff. So you have these two things with adrenochrome that go into, you know, uh, lycanthropy, into the berserkers uh, and uh, Kuru, I should say. And uh, they both associate with insanity. So vampirism goes to insanity as well. They, they get the, you know, the crave for the blood, etc. So we went into that in the last two shows. So check that out. But, uh, you know, so as we get through these uh, stories of the oh goodness now i've misplaced it of lycanthropy and werewolves we get into uh the history of anubis who is the egyptian god who become is well is like a dog so you know that's the same sort of theme the dog-headed man the werewolf and uh he ties over to uh saturn which is death and then we get into uh, cannibalism, which we've just mentioned with the, uh, the Kuru. And uh, so with, with Zeus, with the god Zeus, there's this guy Lycion or Arcadia. And Zeus uh, forces, I think, uh, casts a spell on him or whatever and turns him into a wolf. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zeus, uh, let's see here. The most popular version of the myth tested Zeus's omnis, uh, omniscience by serving him with the roasted flesh of Lycian's own son, Nicotemus, in order to see whether Zeus was truly all-knowing. In return for these gruesome deeds, Zeus transformed Lycian into a wolf along with his offspring. Nip Nicotemus was restored to life. So uh, this is another theme where where this originates or, you know, and, you know, it depends on uh, if, you know, Fomenko's timeline, which shows that this was probably all made up in medieval times and wasn't ancient at all as far as the stories of Zeus and whatnot. But, uh, OK, so Caleb is, you know, Caleb talked about the northern Christian tribes and we'll go into more on that as we go through. Uh, but, you know, here's a guy like uh, Royal Society member Richard Cannibal Dawkins. He's been out there promoting cannibalism, which would be a means of uh, werewolfism. Now, the difference between vampire. OK, so the Bible says the van you're not allowed to drink the blood. So the vampires say, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drink the blood. And so they drink the blood. And so that's uh, vampirism. But the werewolf. Well, there's the flesh, and the werewolf is more of the type who eats the flesh. He eats the fetus. He, you know, kills them alive and eats them with everything going everywhere. The Jeffrey Dahmer types, you know, and Jeffrey Dahmer wanted to keep his victims. And thanks, I forget who told me this now. Uh, he wanted to keep his uh, victims inside him. Uh, he didn't want them to leave him, so it was kind of this mental thing, you know. But others, they, you know, you hear of people, uh, you know, ancient warriors would eat their uh, the people who they killed on the battlefield to consume their their power, their spirit, their warrior spirit. So you see this theme in uh, shamanism as well. They eat the 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 victim with the, like the kanema they'll do this kind of stuff in their 
They're consuming the person's spirit. And so this uh, theme runs in, uh, in uh, werewolfism, et cetera, and in cannibalism. So, you know, this is probably related to that in some way, probably why they're promoting this stuff. But so the werewolf is banished because they drink the blood, because that's what the Bible explains. They're banished from the group. They're sort of dead. They no longer exist. Whereas the werewolf, he goes by, they're allowed to eat anything as long as they drain the blood. And then he goes out and looks like they kill people. But again, this could also be the warrior spirit from the battlefield. They're out on the battlefield. They're in that frenzy of the fight and killing and, and maybe get wrapped up in it and actually start eating someone. And they're wearing the, the here, let me see if I can find one of the examples here. I had them up on the screen here. Uh, wearing uh, some costume or whatever of, they are like this, of a uh, wolf warrior, so to speak, right? So you get something like this going on. And, uh, you know, then, it, you know, they're out there on the kill or whatever. So, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you could see how it could go along with the lycanthropy and whatnot, but they're hiding themselves or they're, it's, you know, to create additional fear in the, in the victims of those whom they're fighting against. Uh, so this ties into Romulus. Romulus is the so-called founder of Rome, and he was fed by wolves. And I suspect that this story goes into the real story of, the, of what Fomenko is laying out. It's probably the story of the two brothers, uh, one who creates Rome and the other one is like orthodoxy or whatever, you know, or Tartary or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised at all. But uh, so, you know, here's another instance of the gods being, you know, tied to the wolves, just like um, just like I was talking about with Anubis. And uh, let's see, it's going to get into shape shifting, of course, and toadism again, shamanism that goes into the Epic of Gilgamesh. And of course, vampires are also said to shape shift. Uh, then there's Therianthropy, which is a form of sorcery. Both Anubis and Ra are, are tied to Therianthropy. And then you have the Skinwalker, which is uh, somebody who puts on the skin or whatever of another, and it's a form of witchcraft. So, you know, it would be like, uh, you know, something out of Silence of the Lambs, where they're actually doing this stuff, out of, you know, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, where they're actually doing this stuff. It, you know... Whenever you see them automatically flip the story and blame stupid Christians, question that, people, because, you know, you can see after a while when you go through all of these stories, you start to see the same pattern over and over, and it gets pretty uh, ridiculous. Um, oh, thank you, uh, Removing Zog, for the uh, $50 donation. We'll be in touch with you, too. I'm the person who met Laura Huxley. Uh, uh, yeah, and I've exposed the Huxleys. Thank you so much for that, and um, I really appreciate the support there. Also, hey, Caleb, you want to throw out your uh, email f for uh, any support people want to give? Yeah, sure. It's M-I-C-K dot C-A-L-E-B at gmail.com, and I have a PayPal. That's the PayPal link as well. Send me information, uh, whatever. Cool. So uh, just getting back into this stuff, um, you know, and then I'll pass it back over to you here in a second. Let's see. So uh, lycanthropy. Oh, goodness. I'll probably let you cover the moon stuff. You know, that ties into more. Um, she, wolf, silver. The moon is related to silver. But uh, I think you would possibly figure that out. I don't know. You were focused on that. Here's some of the other people that were involved in the uh, trials of werewolfism and uh, cannibalism. So, again, the stories of werewolves tend to coincide with cannibalism. Uh, in a town of Dole, France, a series of children went missing and were later found torn apart in the woods. During the autumn of 19, uh, 1572, timeline accounts vary. Townspeople were charged with finding the werewolf 
uh, responsible. In November, a hunting group witnessed a wild animal attack on a child, and someone recognized that the beef beast had features that resembled a local hermit, Giles Garnier. So, okay, and then it's going to go on. The children disappeared. Garnier with his wife were arrested. So he's a hermit, but he's got a wife. That's a contradiction right there. 50 okay. witnesses tested against Garnier. Okay, that's a whole lot of witnesses, folks. And he was put on the rack. He confessed to hunting, killing, and eating children. Confessed to hunting, killing, and eating children. Okay, so that's uh, cannibalism. Okay, so, you know, that's, you know, that stuff does actually happen. It's, you know, we, you know, we should first suspect that it actually did happen rather than the spin against it, especially with that many witnesses. In January 1950, uh, 1573, Garnier was burned at the stake. Modern speculation is that Garnier was guilty of murder and cannibalism as he found children easier to catch than wildlife. But the werewolf confession is attributed to either mental illness or torture. Okay, so we already talked about adrenochrome and um, and Kuru, and the, and so it looks like I actually accidentally doubled that up there, or maybe not. Children went missing, were later found torn apart in the woods. Oh yeah, I guess it is. Anyway, whatever. I'll fix that later. So uh, all of these guys are the really the same thing, but a lot of, some of these guys get uh, a lot worse. One notorious wolf, and this is the wolf of Ansbach uh, case, the actual wolf, 1685, principally of Ansbach, part of the Roman Empire, now a district of Germany, a man eating wolf, preyed upon livestock, and then moved on to eating people. Citizens thought they were being terrorized by a werewolf, who has their unnamed and hated former mayor of the guise of a wolf. The hunting party with dogs drove the wolf into a well where it was killed. Still believing it was a werewolf, the citizens chopped off the wolf's head, dressed it in a man's clothing. So this is an anthropomorphism rather than lycanthropy. Rather than turning the man into the wolf, they're turning the wolf into the man. This is what they're claiming here. Adding a, a human mask and hung the body from a pole. So is that true? You know, that's a bit uh, strange. But, you know, what they always try to do is make the people look just crazy and stupid. Oh, oh they actually thought the wolf was a man, so they had to dress him up. Uh, Veslov of Polotsk. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? I forgot to. Oh, no, I, did. I didn't. Never mind. Uh, he was the ruler of uh, the Poltsak, a region that is now part of Belarus from 1044 to 1101. History records him as a strong warrior, but he's also said to be a sorcerer. So we have that tie in there as well. Sorcery is another you know, way of saying witchcraft. And people, you know, when you start looking into that, as I've exposed for years, when you understand what it really is, it's not just hoodoo voodoo. It's not just make-believe. In Russian literature, he is called... Vesel, uh, excuse me, Veseslav, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I'm not good at Russian uh, names, I'm much better at Serbo Croatian. Uh, folk tales pegged him as a werewolf soon after his death, and his reputation was recorded in 12th century poem, The Tale of Igor's Campaign. It is the prince said to race from town, town to town as a wolf. So, uh, goodness, how did all these get doubled up? I don't know what happened there. Did you get that Gandal the Gandion family in there? Gandion. The I'm not sure if I got the Gandion family. So the Gandion family was in uh, 1598. Um, this was in uh, France. Pierre, George, Antoinette, P and uh, Pierre Rene. I can't pronounce that, but uh, French werewolves of Saint Cloud in the Jura region, France, one of the major historical cases of lycanthropy. Uh, Perrine believed that she was a wolf and one day in 1598 attacked two children who were picking strawberries. One of them, a four-year-old boy, defended his sister with a knife, but uh, Perrine wrenched the knife from his hand and gashed his throat. He died of the wound after communicating the news that the wolf 
had human hands. Perione was found in the vicinity and torn to pieces by the enraged villagers. Antone confessed to the to being a werewolf and was also s- sleeping with the devil and had taken the form of uh, the devil who had had taken the form of a goat attending a sabbat ding 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 and producing magical hailstorms her brother pierre was also accused of making hailstones luring children to a sabbat uh, turning himself into a wolf and killing and eating people he stated that satan clothed them as wolves and that they hunted on all fours pierre's son George also confessed to changing into a wolf by smearing himself with a salve and killing two goats. Antone, Pierre, George were all convicted uh, as, as were wolves and burned in 1598. The presiding judge was Henri Bourgeois, uh, whose Discourse de Sorcier became a standard guide to witchcraft. So that that was another that was the last medieval uh, reference that I had to werewolf attacks. Yeah, but uh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, interestingly, when you look up a lot of these pictures, so I looked up some of these pictures, uh, uh, these wood cuttings that start to show up in. Uh, in and around these areas and what you'll see here is a woodcut i just had that on screen did you a woodcut by this guy lucas karnak de altier in 1512 this is an interesting character um uh he was a german renaissance painter and uh printmaker and woodcut engraving uh let's see so his portraits, both German princes for for German princes and those leaders of the Protestant Reformation, again, uh, who, and and then, and then this is also interesting. He was a it, Wikipedia says he was a close friend of Martin Luther, which is also interesting at the time. But uh, so the question that I have is, so you have these all these stories popping up. Uh, people are fearing for their lives. The people are claiming to be wolves. I'm wondering if it's something deeper. Are they are they wearing these wolf costumes and spreading these wolf costumes as a deeper motif? Is there something to this? Um, where does the myth come from? And that's where the Fomenko thing that um, Jan was just mentioning uh, was, was fitting into the whole narrative for me. Um, so the first thing that I'll read uh, just as a premise of what Fomenko is really getting at when he's talking about the origin of some of these wolf stories. Um, and if you think about it, a good way to think about it for me is, okay, so if, you, if you've ever seen old medieval uh, sh- uh, TV shows or documentaries or movies, uh, just envision Game of Thrones if you've seen it. They all have their banners. They have banners, you know, each, each one of these... Uh, tribes or empires whatever you want to call them have banners they carry these banners around the north the northmen have the the head of the wolf on their banner um and it seems like there's a war okay like fast forward a little bit to modern times there's a war between the the uh vampires and the werewolves this is another uh interesting theme that pops up in pop culture movies where there's a war between them. So, you know, we do this show about vampires, talking about vampires. Well, if they're both evil, wouldn't they be friends? Wouldn't they like work together? Or, or, or I guess a lot of times they do have them competing and sometimes they do work together. So what is that about? Well, so Fomenko uh, in one of his books said something really interesting that made me realize, okay, there's something more to this. He said, throughout Christianity, the attitude toward the birth giver of God is particularly respectful obviously. However, in the rabbinical Judaic version, and also clearly apparent in the writings of the ancient authors like Titus Livy, who we get a lot of our history from, right? The Virgin Mary, as well as Christ, are on the contrary portrayed negatively. 
and I, I don't know how much people have looked into the Judaic rabbinic religious books, um, but you definitely see for sure a very negative portrayal of Christ, the Virgin Mary, etc. Mary was accused of forni fornication with a Roman soldier. They also alleged she was raped. According to another version, uh, a soldier secretly entered Mary's palace at night in the guise of her husband on the basis because yeah, she wouldn't know her own husband even in, a, yep. in disguise yeah so these are all lies obviously but uh on the basis jesus was called a pitful mamzer a bastard i.e born to uh, mary and joseph out of wedlock as we discover further in roman version by titus livy the birth giver of god is described as a famous roman she-wolf the capitoline wolf and also as a promiscuous laurentia uh, cheating on her husband with strangers clearly a uh, similarly critical view of the virgin mary can be found in the works of other chronicles uh, the the picture is clear many disputed the christian idea of the immaculate conception and tried to belittle and to distort this motif tirelessly uh, conjecturing about the debauchery uh, a, a roman soldier the rape all that stuff was um comes out of the hatred for the uh, other side of the Christian church. These uh, Judaic rabbinic um, versions clearly are trying to, uh, to portray the Virgin Mary as a she-wolf, okay? And I have a ton of grammar on this. Uh, maybe, I ha maybe I'll have time to read and a, it. And a she-wolf is another word for a prostitute, which I just had up on the screen. Yeah, so they're calling her a she-wolf. Now, part of the wolf motif has to do with the fact that the northern and by the way uh, another reference if you look into the really old versions of the bible uh the ostrug and uh, the 1500s versions of the bible they're translated into old slavic um if you look into a lot of those texts they've they and, and you compare them to newer versions they've taken out a ton of grammar and some of the grammar that they've taken out was references to the north snow ice sheets uh ice bridges across land and uh all kinds of references and if you go look at them uh Fomenko presents them all as primary sources that's where i got them from but uh what you see is okay so there's these northern tribes possibly very intertwined with the uh, wolves, they, the wolf was a big part of their uh, culture, right? So not only that, but um, when you go and you look at a lot of the warriors, the warriors for a lot of these, uh, for the empire, the, particularly the elite warriors would wear wolf and dog heads as they go into battle. And you can see that if you, uh, here, I'll just share uh some pictures here so people can get that idea so you got these these uh warriors wearing the wolf clothing um and they, these are the slavs the you know all the norse that i was talking about earlier and by the way slav is another word for slave who those of you who don't get it the enslaved mm -hmm. north this enslaved whites exactly um Shh, it was only black people <laughs> so i'll just share this so people can see the pictures i'm describing all right so i talked about that picture okay so the the pictures yawn was the the groups yawn was talking about earlier with the man into a wolf um the slavic uh and the germanic all the really old um notions of men warriors wearing these wolf skins this is something that i think is very important uh in the whole big scheme of things when we're talking about werewolves so what it looks like to me is these warriors that were all uh intertwined in the whole wolf paradigm were now all of a sudden in the um 1500s which and this is all uh, if you're looking at the timeline from the new chronology that Fomenko puts out all this stuff was happening close to it itself it's not 
long drawn out huge spans of time uh the dark ages didn't exist you know etc et but you'll see the the false flag idea that i'm talking about where okay they're they're blaming a whole group of people and not only are the same group of people that they're talking about associated to wolves um but I believe that has something to do with the myths involved with, you know, the anti-wolf uh, narrative and blaming that whole group of people and the religious schism between the religious groups as well. I think that's a significant thing. Now, on top of that, uh, fomenko has got some interesting information on the, tr the, uh, the medieval and the ancient literature mentions people with canine heads. We mentioned Anubis a little bit earlier. Um, there is an enormous amount canine, of ancient... Canaanite. Wait, no. <laughs> There's enormous amount of ancient artwork depicting such people in Egypt, in particular. People with canine heads were also portrayed in the old Orthodox icons. I've got a ton of pictures here, but uh, they're just in black and white. Um, I think I'm sure people have seen a lot of them. Um, St. Christopher, for instance, um, all of it is believed to be pure fantasy, like flying dragons and breathing fire without any root in, in reality whatsoever. Is it so? We are of the opinion that all of the legends and all of the artwork of this sort is based on reality. What we encounter is a medieval symbolism, which must have had a, a definite meaning in medieval Russia in particular. It is likely, although the issue doubtlessly requires deep research, that the dog symbolism represented the guards at the court of the Russian princes or the khans or uh, kings or some organization similar to the prince's guard. Okay, I won't read this whole thing, but I'll try to summarize this real quick. So you see a lot of these pictures. Uh, even uh, Marco Polo even uh, has pictures of this and, and lots of medieval uh, motifs with the an anthropomorphic um, uh, presentation of the the dog head on top of a man, right? Well, just so happens that the the elite army of the Cossacks were were being portrayed in the anthropomorphic anthropomorphic figures because. Uh, the people with canine heads were frequent characters of medieval European historical chronicles. For instance, the Czech Cossacks, uh, the infantry men were known as the dog heads, and they had canine symbols on their banners. So this just goes and gives more. I, I got a ton more, but I don't have time to read all of it. But this is, this is what I'm trying to get across, is that likely these old tribes had, uh, in the north, had these... Um, banners of the of the dog and the wolf on their banner this is a really important thing to them so then you start to realize the whole um the whole reason why these um the people are being portrayed negatively in this manner these are the enemies of the new world order this is the old world order of tartary that we're talking about and as opposed to the new uh you know judaic rabbinic versions that are trying to portray the wolf in a completely negative way now i think it's important to kind of go in just for a second Jan, if you if you have something to add you can because i was gonna uh kind of go a little bit deeper into the idea of uh the wolf and how the mother mary was portrayed as a wolf and then you can see romulus and remus who is probably uh john the baptist and jesus being portrayed as romulus and remus and how that whole dynamic can be uh, understood. Why don't, you, why don't you just dig into that since you already started it? So go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, and I just want to say people in the audience, you know, keep it on topic. We know who's behind most of this stuff. You don't have to post it up in every single post and stuff in your comments. Just, you know, try to use your, your brain and be, uh, you know, considerate and try not to get the channel shut down. You know, this is already walking a thin line. So just try to use your heads. Thanks. All right, so the Virgin Mary, the mother of Christ, is uh, an ancient Romulus described by Titus Livy as Laurentia, a woman by the name of She-Wolf. Um, the infant's Romulus, partially Christ, 
and Remus partially John the Baptist. When he says partially, if you read the grammar, he goes into why uh, a lot of historians have confused the stories. Uh, there's a translation issues, and there's also deliberate cover-ups and uh, splicing of different people. So it would be harder for us to put the pieces together to figure all this stuff out, which is why I'm so thankful that Fomenko has got so much of this grammar. Um, ha uh, having happily escaped death, despite the order of the evil king, live alone, secluded from the rest of the world, suckled by a she-wolf. Sometime later, a certain shepherd finds the rescues, Romulus and Remus. Titus Livy communicates the opinion of the ancient authors that the she-wolf was in fact a woman. A shepherd brought the children home and let his wife, Laurentia, raise them up. Others think that Laurentia was called a she-wolf amongst the shepherds. A historian, Sextus Aurelius Victor, says that the twins were given to a woman, Aka Laurentia, uh, and this woman was called a she-wolf for selling her body. Thus, are called the women who sell themselves for profit. That is why a, a place where they live is called Lupanar. Baby Jesus, a.k.a. Romulus, was but of course suckled not by a she-wolf, but, but by a woman, Mary, his mother. Only the later authors began to be confused in the description of the biblical events. Why was the story of the she-wolf suckling the infant Romulus and Remus so popular? The she-wolf with two infants even became, in a sense, a symbol of ancient Rome. In the book, in a previous book, we have analyzed a famous ancient story king, Aenus, carries out on his back his father, Achesis, uh, or Anchises, holding a relic, and leads his son to Achanus, Acanius by the hand of a burning Troy. Wait, by the hand from burning Troy. His wife, Cresa, uh, sorry, my, uh, my characters, my ancient Roman characters need work. His wife, Cresa, is walking by Aenus, Aenus' side. In fact, this is a vague reflection of the biblical flight into Egypt of Joseph with his, with his wife, Mary, and the baby Jesus. Notably, Jesus and Mary were traveling on a donkey's back. It appears that later writers called Mary, mother of God, Anchises, Anchises. <laughs> a man, Joseph, was recast as a woman. Remember, these guys are trying to cover their tracks. These, these uh, uh, Judaizers who rewrote the history are are trying to make it difficult for us to figure this stuff out. So think in that context a little bit. Um, the biblical donkey was renamed Aenus. At, th at the total number of the characters was left unchanged. There were four of them originally and four of them remained, but the writers mistakenly mixed up their names. The most ancient Roman story of the Capitoline wolf, i.e. a woman called Laurentia, her husband and the two babies, Romulus and Remus is another distorted version of the same biblical story of the flight into Egypt by Mother Mary and Jesus traveling on a donkey's back, except that the biblical donkey was transferred under Titus Livy's pen into a Roman she-wolf. The later ancient authors heatedly discuss the reason a woman, Laurentia, i.e. a virgin Mary, as we understand now, was called a she-wolf. They purported that Latin lupa means she-wolf. And in common parlance, it also means a whore, uh, meaning a woman who, according to Titus Levy, gave herself to anyone. However, it is possible that the Latin lupa originated in the Slavic lipo, lipil, li, liubo, meaning beautiful. So we already have, so we have, we see a lost in translation, meaning that, that uh, they're trying to portray her as this, this she-wolf, right? This, this, uh, um, negative meaning and realistically the whole time the word was probably translated at, in the original as beautiful um, then everything becomes clear the mother Mary was called beautiful Lepaya, Lepo later when the core of this matter was forgotten the ancient authors of the 16th and 17th century tenditiously changed the respectful Slavonic Lepaya, Lepo into Latin a she-wolf, a whore after which they began to seriously analyze and transform of a woman into a she-wolf. 
the fact that in Russian, the word lepo, if read backwards from right to left, as do the Arabs and Jews, for example, could have been confused with the word lechery and could have led one to believe that the subject they referred to as wanton or immortal woman could have played its part in the cunning blackening of, of the woman's reputation. So we see motive. We have, uh, we have the smoking gun here of how, how this story changes from a beautiful woman into a, a she-wolf. However, I think it's important just to know this, that uh, the story uh, of the, of the she-wolf pops up, even on the Wikipedia page of the werewolf uh, in the story of Romulus and Remus. And it's very interesting that it could possibly, according to Fomenko, be a cover-up story about how the, the founders of Rome, Romulus and Remus, were actually Jesus and, and John the Baptist. That would be another attack on Christianity and a similar repetition of the same thing that we've been talking about with the rest of the vampire shows and uh, the witchcraft shows at all. And I got a lot more on that, but I think people get the point. Yeah, keep point it on topic in the uh, chat, folks. You're off topic. They're going into Mormonism and everything else, but uh, talking about uh, what we're discussing today, which is werewolves and the ties to witchcraft and everything else. So uh, anyway, um, you know, activist news, keep it on topic. Uh, you know, if you keep going off topic, uh, let's see. No disrespect intended. Anyway, you're disrespecting and you're wasting everybody's time here. So you're going on time out. Bye bye. So anyway, you know, if we're, you know, we've discussed how all of the books, you know, if, if you think that you are intelligent because you didn't read something and therefore you're smarter than everybody else who read it and it has nothing of value because you took one quote out of somewhere else and you think you can debunk something else that you haven't read from one quote from something else, that's very limited, narrow-minded thinking. You know, if, you know, at least have the intelligence to go in and read things, you know, you can go through and take what's of value without throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We don't go into MK Ultra research and read all of these, you know, agent books, Leary's books, you know, uh, Jay Stevens at all, and, you know, believe them wholeheartedly. We go in there and analyze the works and understand what they have to offer before we just dismiss them and say, Masons, you know, it's just like, it's a childish response. You got to have critical thinking. So, um, anyway, keep it on topic in the, uh, in the chat there. Uh, we use the chat for, you know, uh, furthering the show on topic and, you know, to see what people have to offer as far as questions and stuff to, uh, to, uh, keep the show going. So we're at an hour in, um, we have, uh, I'm sure we have more to go through here. Uh, let's see. I'm sure I had more here. Oh, I, I did. I wanted to get into, so, um, a lot of the plants and things like that, they have, you, you, when you go through all of these stories and, uh, thanks to Tatiana in Serbia for, uh, finding this information. Um, she's from Ponchevo where I've been many times. But uh, let's see. So many ways to become a werewolf. Um, I think uh, Jacob had this on screen earlier, but some of the ways are bitten by another wolf, being scratched or clawed by another werewolf, selling your soul to the devil, wearing an enchanted belt made of wolf skin fur known as a wolf belt, applying magic salve. So we talked about the salve, black magic and witchcraft. So they're tied together. Eating lycanthropus flowers, a white and yellow flower is said to be in the Balkans. And, uh, of course, Serbia is in the Balkans where a lot of the stuff on vampirism and uh, lycanthropy comes from. Inhaling certain potions, wearing a, uh, simply wearing an animal's pelt, uh, packing a real wolf pelt on one's body, and then drinking beer mixed with blood. So there's the blood reference. Um Drinking from a wolf's paw print, eating the brains of a wolf, spells and rituals, having sex with a werewolf, eating an unborn fetus, which was accused of uh, Peter, uh, this guy here, Peter Stump, 
And um, let's see, wearing, wearing the belt made of the skin of an executed criminal, being cursed by a witch or troll, being born on Christmas Eve. Well, my grandmother was born on Christmas Eve, and she wasn't a werewolf. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, being blasphemous or getting cursed for your sins, genetics, having a werewolf in your family, drinking from a lycro, like, lycanthropus stream, drinking downstream from werewolves, sleeping on a Friday night under the full moon, shining directly on your face, being the seventh sun. Interesting. So the seventh son of the seventh son, seven generations, being a child conceived under the new moon not going to confession for 10 years, being gruesomely murdered on a full moon, being born on a full moon Friday, tasting human flesh. There we go. There it is. Tasting human flesh, being chosen by a Native American wolf spirit. That's a bit foo-foo there, probably. Um, let's see here. So we already kind of went into this. This is more on how to become a werewolf. They you know, talk about Zeus here and uh, uh, Ly Lycian. Uh, that's probably where the <laughs> Lycian. That's probably where the underground group comes gets their name to. Wolf, herbs and potions. Uh, fairly uh, common to become a werewolf. Usually contains wolf's bane, a highly con uh, poisonous to humans. You know, again, people. You know, all you young hippies and everything out there. You know, we were into all of that stuff at one time. It's all stupid. You know. We're not telling you go out and eat this stuff and try to become a werewolf, you know, for you idiots out there who actually try this stuff at home. Don't. So, you know, uh, just, you know, you don't need to do this stuff. We're trying to expose it so that it can't be used against us, not to encourage your behavior in it. Uh, let's see. Small amount of powdered silver and other herbs. A potion either drank or rubbed on the skin, yada, yada. Uh, demonic pact, uh, be born as one. Wolf eating human meat. Uh, water touched by a werewolf. Lycanthropus flowers. So again, the similar themes of the same. Yeah, the uh, parvo virus. Uh, so that's a dog virus, parvo. Um, anyway... At least I think it was. That's what I always knew when I, you know, grew up in a veter around veterinarians. Uh, let's see here. Animal or animag ana animagus potion, and this is on a Harry Potter wiki. And you know, use to transform. Will at any time. Person to brew a potion cannot be bought from someone else brewing it involves including a piece of one's own hair uh, a lot of these potions use mandrake which we're, we're going to go into it in just a second i've covered mandrake in the past uh so there's all these recipes out there that these people promote here's another one uh potions and lycanthropy this guy is a satanist and thinks he's pretty cool magical fantasy adventure so how to turn yourself into a werewolf you know, probably people that drink this stuff or whatever get sick or could potentially kill themselves or, you know, what have you. But, you know, try to avoid being stupid and, and falling into the left-hand path stuff. We're just bringing attention again to it. So here's alchemist trained sorcery can create a lycanthropy potion. So that's like a salve, a potion made from when the moon is unobscured. And high in the sky, lunar eclipse must be most potent of all. So there's another moon tie-in. Here we get into Mandrake. I almost wrote a book on Mandrake at one point. Um, I figured, you know, after I did a bunch of research on it, that everything that, or just about everything that has to be said on it is already published in this one guy, uh, Thompson's, or Thompson, in his book, I think was his name. But, uh, you know, so interestingly, Mandrake is supposed to be pulled up by a chained dog who is chained to it because the plant is said to shriek and will blind and kill anybody or, or deafen and kill anybody around who hears the shriek. So that way it just, you know, kills the dog instead. So interesting tie-in to the dog there. Um, toxicity, alkaloids, uh, tropane alkaloids. And uh, I believe it contains scopolamine, which, you know, literally makes you go 
crazy, uh, causes convulsions, uh, melancholy, mania. Uh, let's see, excite, uh, said to excite delirium and madness. Okay, so not exactly stuff that you want to get into in the Bible. It does talk about this in Genesis and in Song of Songs. Uh, Rachel, uh, I forget, Rachel and Leah and the whole story of, uh, of Mandrake there. Um, it's also Mandragora, et cetera. But uh, so atropine, you know, blurry vision, dilated pupils, dryness of the mouth, difficulty urinating, dizziness, headache, vomiting, blushed, rap, uh, rapid heart rate or tachycardia, hallucinations, et cetera. So um, anyway, not good stuff. People are saying that the uh, stream is dropping, happened five times in the last minute. The stream is strobing in and out. All right. Not sure what's going on there. Sorry, folks. Um, oh, shit. It is down. Let's see. It shows that it's up on our side. Is it down on your side totally? Not on my side, but yeah. It's yeah some people are saying it's fine now. It is fine now. I. It's totally down on my side. Sheesh. Yeah, stream good for yeah. People are saying it's fine. All right, well I'll just keep going and I'll I can't even see the uh, chat now, unfortunately. That's a bummer. I, I wonder what happened there. So anyway, I'll see if I can uh, find a way to get back in there. Yeah, people are saying it's fine. All right. Good grief, man. I wonder what happened. So. Uh, yeah, mine is not up. Thank you for the uh, uh, super chat there, whomever posted that. That was uh, P.S. Massage. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, anyway, going back to this, uh, I cannot see it, so I'll just have to go by what the audience says on all of this. Oh, goodness. Um, what was this here? Oh, this was Lysion. We already covered that earlier. Let me just get back to the uh, Mandrake here. So that's the Mandrake apple. Don't go out eating this stuff, folks. You know, just because you saw it in Harry Potter, or you think it's cool, or you think it's cheek to be, uh, you know, a Satanist or whatever, and just do the opposite, you know, just to be cool like all the Satanists do. Um, you know, so uh, anyway, uh, plenty there about Mandrake and its ties to it. Ambrosia is another one that pops up, and it's possibly blood which would tie into uh, uh, tie into vampirism as well and what we covered last week and uh, distributed by a nymph labeled uh, with that name in the myth of Lycurgus. Okay, so there's, uh, there's the name of a wolf again, or, you know, Ly L-Y-C, like lycanthropy, forbade the cult of Dionysus, whom he drove to Thrace and was driven mad by the god fit uh, in, a, in his fit of insanity, he killed his son, whom he mistook as a stock of manure, uh, or sorry, mature ivy, and the nymph Ambrosia, and transformed into the grapevine. But interesting that name there, because uh, L Y C, the root there would be like like uh, lycanthropy or wolf. So uh, here's another one that uh, Tatiana sent from. Uh, uh, I almost said Yugoslavia from Serbia. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this right now, but there's a, a lot of good stuff. Uh, Blackberry, let's see, plenty of blackberries, adopted wild stories, belief in natural that they should become very popular, deepest root. I think we're down. We're down, we're off. Uh, yeah, there's about all right. Six I've, I just uh, relaunched it. Let's see if that works and fixes it. I don't know. Not sure what's going on there. It says we're live over here. I don't know what the heck, man. I just refreshed mine and it shows we're live. So I think that works. Grief, man. You're not supposed to talk about this, I guess. Yeah, that's crazy. I tried refreshing it and it said you. It 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 was just completely dark. I can't even uh, get the show up. You know, I'm not seeing us live up there at all. Let me see if an video Eric... playback is interrupted. You just lost it as well. Yep. It keeps, uh, 
I don't know. There's a lot, a lot of people saying it works and some saying that it doesn't. So I guess we could just keep going if people are saying it's still working. I can't see anything. So we're going to have to rely on them to tell us. Um, but we'll, we'll upload it later. Well, why don't you take over for a minute and I'll, you know, cause I'm probably going to have to close this browser. Um, you know, okay. Yeah, I belong in the kitchen, says she hears us still. So we'll just keep going we'll, and we'll put it up for people who lost it. You can come back and look at the... Uh, yeah, well, I better start recording from this side in case we lost it all. Shoot, man. Okay, so one interesting thing that uh, on the, along those lines for me, it, it, I don't even like mentioning this, honestly. Um, I'm not even going to give out the actual um, website, but there is... Um, a church of Satan website that you can actually go on. And there's a whole, I mean, when I saw this, I just wanted to throw up. I felt dirty just, just looking at it. It's like how to become a werewolf. And they give you this whole ritual that you can perform. And it shows like a whole thing about all the benefits of becoming a werewolf and how you can gain all this power physically and emotionally. And uh, part of it, you had to, like, you know, you're sitting in a circle with an animal costume while you're, while you're uh, playing with yourself. Good grief. It, yeah, it's horrible. But uh, is YouTube down? I don't know. There's people still saying that, like, there's still people saying they, that it's working. And there's some saying that I see you behind the black screen. I see so, you behind the black screen. Yeah, like, I don't know. It looks like YouTube is definitely acting up. Yeah, it's definitely YouTube for sure. Well, it shows we're still streaming. Well, I'm recording this on our side, so if it goes down, I'll just upload it. So just keep going. Sorry, folks. Uh, I cannot see the chat or anything at all up there to see if anybody is still there. You can still see people? It's not. I can see the chat. The chat's working great. But uh, the I have the chat popped out into a whole nother window, but the YouTube does not is not working at all on not just on our stream for me. Oh, wow. I'm getting an internal server error off of uh, YouTube. Yeah, you know what that means? They're trying to shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll just keep going. So Let's see. What else here? What else did I want to talk about here besides that stupid website? So, yeah, they're actually promoting this stuff uh, today, like open and freely that you could go become a werewolf if you do these specific things. It could just be, I don't know, who knows what it is, if it's on the uh, Church of Satan website. But uh, anyways... There's also uh, some interesting th things that I found within the mythology. I wanted to talk just a second about the moon. Uh, okay, so references to the moon and the werewolf. Uh, nothing really surprising to a lot of people. The, the moon is uh, obviously wolves howl at the moon. Um, that's not a secret. Everybody kind of knows that the moon has some sort of effect on people um, psychologically. Um, it probably has a lot to do with hormones. Well, since yeah, we well, know women's menstrual or menstrual cycles. Yep, the menstrual cycle. So we, we can also observe a lot of things in nature, uh, even with animals, a lot of different hormonal things with animals and lots of behavior that happens with the moon. So uh, the moon is also represented uh somebody just sent me a message it is streaming so okay okay um so some people are still getting it and some aren't i don't know that's right. weird so uh the moon is also associated obviously with uh the darkness of the night um which is you know another you know and in october you get the harvest moon and it uh the moon is obviously a big deal to the ancient calendar the quote-unquote ancient calendar um used to be moon it used to be a moon cycle we still use the word moon for month it, that's the um etymology of the word month is moon and uh we used to be very our, our calendar used to be very intertwined within the 
the moon calendar. There's also interesting things if you start to look into, you know, and I, I don't know if I can confirm or deny some of these claims, but uh, various people have made the claims that a lot of rituals happen on moon, around the moon, the full moon, and uh, specifically like, um, you know, there's the Sam Hain, uh, uh, ancient rituals of the Celts and, and, and a lot of the harvest moon, everybody in the ancient times would start to harvest right about now. You'd start to see the death of the trees. Um, you know, the whole astro theology side of it, where you, you start to notice, um, you know, that the, the seasons and the Zodiac have a certain relationships. There's also, uh, silver is the element of the moon in uh, occult, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, I forgot what, what book I read that in. But there's, uh, a, there's oh, what is it called? They were working with uh, transmutation of elements and whatnot. Anyways, the, the silver is, is associated with the moon. That's probably the where the silver bullet comes from. Uh, some people speculate that the silver has something to do with colloidal silver. Jan found something about how they say that uh, powdered silver can actually turn you into a werewolf, which was right. In- well, it was mixed with uh, with mandrake. Yeah. So, however, the the moon the the whole silver bullet thing is likely just a reference to the silver uh, associated with the moon. Um, other than that, yeah. People have said that a lot of people have died. Uh, very famous people are are choosing when to have cesarean sections and when they're choosing to be, you know, put to death are specifically on uh, moon cycles and sun cycles and specific dates for some uh, for some sort of uh, uh, you know afterlife, kind of like stuff that was written about in the Egyptian book of dead, possibly, possibly there's a connection that people have figured out over the, uh, um, you know, years that that has something to do with the afterlife. So that, that's where a lot of the myths come from at least. But, uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, anything else I wanted to mention here? Yeah, there's a ton of stuff I can go into on a uh, little bit more on the, the myth side of it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, Hist- a little bit more on the history. A werewolf in folklore and mythology is a person who shapeshifts into a wolf, either purposely or by using magic or being or after being placed under a curse. The medieval chronicle uh, Gav- Gervais of Tilbury associated with the transform associated the transformation with the appearance of the full moon. But this concept was rarely associated with the werewolf until the idea was picked up from a modern fiction writer. Okay, so that's kind of a newer thing. That wasn't really a super old thing. Um, Most modern references agree that a werewolf can be killed if shot by a silver bullet, although this is more of a reflection of fiction's influence than on an authentic feature of folk legend. A werewolf allegedly can be killed by complete destruction of the heart and brain. Uh, Silver isn't necessary. Many European countries and cultures have Stories of werewolves, including France, Greece, Spain, Bulgaria, uh, Czech Republic, Serbia, Russia, Ukraine, Croatia, Poland, Romania, Scotland, England, Ireland, Germany, Denmark, uh, Galicia, Norway, Norway, Portugal, Lithuania, Latvia, uh, Estonia, Andorra, Uh, Argentina even has one called uh, Lobizon Hombre Lobo and Italian Lupo Manaro. In uh, Northern Europe, there is also... Can you still see the chat? Are we still going? Actually, let me check. Yeah, it looks like the chat's still going. 
I still can't get in there, so. What are they saying? Let's see, it looks like. Uh, I belong in the kitchen says she still sees the chat and the all right just yeah let's just keep going yeah. we're, we're gonna have to wrap it up here in a few minutes since you know I can't tell what's going on or anything I you know everything else is working but that so I'm not sure what's going on cool anything you wanted to get in before the well I've covered most of my notes so uh let's see I'm just not I, I just would like to say that I'm not I'm not saying that people can actually shapeshift into wolves uh you know i'm not jumping to that conclusion Correct. that people there are actually uh you know wolf people running around kind of like my premise that I'm, I'm starting to understand here is that some of these myths of of these various uh you know characters that we are celebrating around halloween have these ties these older ties and I, and that's why i was trying to bring up a lot of stuff that you haven't already heard a lot of people have already heard a lot of where the myths were based. And I think, um, I think it's interesting that there are, uh, you know, there are roots within the myths that probably have some sort of a deep history within us, um, that, that, you know, comes from somewhere there's, there's, it's grounded, it's founded. And I think that's, what's important to understand about this is that we were probably one thing that, needs to be said is we were probably at some point scared of wolves um you know if we lived in a village and a wolf attack and we heard of a wolf attack if that ever well, they happened may, they, well they not only that but they could kill your livestock your chickens mm -hmm. your your sheep your cattle whatever you mm -hmm. know kill your children so you know there would be a good reason to fear wolves in in my opinion oh perfectly good reason and and we've We've, we know that our fears, a lot of our fears are based on survival of people will have nightmares and you'll be being chased by a werewolf or whatever, um, you know, a monster, or whatever. A lot of those are founded in uh, probably in, in our survival mechanism that gets passed on through our DNA uh, because of our ancestors past, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's there for a reason. But I think one of the things that needs to be said is some of the like when i mentioned the whole false flag idea a lot of the the fear that gets put into the noosphere uh, or the memosphere is is um heavily uh put out there at this time right about this time when when nature itself is starting to die all the leaves are starting to die and here gets inserted all this uh you know extra fear porn and it becomes a festival of fear and that can be a dangerous thing and that's why we're discussing a lot of these notions so that people maybe uh, take away some of their fears uh, that can control us i wonder i wonder if it's just the business as usual where all the the horror movies and everything is just kind of a continuation of some of these false flags that might have happened in the past in order to cause mass hysteria you know, have you ever thought maybe some of these people putting on these costumes, going out and killing people, um, putting it in the newspapers and then the hangings and everything, if that wasn't to uh, induce fear, uh, in mass hysteria in, in the populace in order to gain control for political? Uh, well, it would be just like the, the British and the, the Puritans at Salem used the the french and indians is fear porn you know mm -hmm. exactly so now but i think it's very interesting now that we have direct ties to the salem the witch trials uh not only just the salem witch trials but a lot of the witch trials that happened all over uh even in europe and etc um but also the the uh werewolf stories and now we we've got really similar um, historically based myths that are intertwined within the same context of the um, hallucinogens, the subversion of... Suggestogens. We got to stop using their words, you know? Yeah, 
Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'll work on that. I do, well, I do it too, and I created the word suggestogen, and it drives me crazy that I still use their words. Yep. Go um, ahead. Sorry. Oh well, yeah. No, I think that's I think that's just about all I had on werewolves to say. Yeah. So you know, just tying it all back together, we showed the history of Salem and the witchcraft trials and all of that, and how. That stuff was real and how they've twisted it and covered it all up to, uh, you know, to blame the Christians. They've done the same thing with vampirism. It's just those crazy Christians. People didn't actually do, excuse me, do human sacrifices and drink human blood. Um, you know, it wasn't a specific Jewish element behind these things when we know now that it was. And this stuff didn't go on with werewolves and with putting these you know, wolf skins and whatnot on and then going out and, you know, as a, as a thing for war, as a thing to create fear for social cohesion within a, you know, a, a town or tribe or group or what have you. Uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons why this may have been done. It could have just been your simple out of your mind uh, Jeffrey Dahmer types, you know, and, you know, just because most people are good people, you can't assume that the most evil people don't exist. Just because you're a good person doesn't mean that someone equally as bad as you isn't out there and isn't capable of doing all of this stuff. You know, so if we, when we're, we read these old stories, if we stop going, oh, oh, well, it was just, you know, the Christians made it all up because they're Christians. So we're going to ignore the 52, you know, testimonies and the admission of murder and, uh, you know, the court records and everything else, we're just going to ignore all of that and just say crazy Christians. I mean, you know, that's just a an oversimplified dismissal of any evidence and any, you know, critical thinking. So we have to avoid fallacious arguments like that. Um, you know, for, uh, for the show tonight, if it didn't get recorded all the way through, I did record it, so I'll have to repost it if it didn't... Uh, work but hopefully it did people still are saying that it's up there so who knows what's going on but um anyway i guess that's a wrap for us tonight it's about uh usual shutdown time anyway so uh i think that's it thank you for everyone who supported thank you uh if you were able to put up a super chat i wasn't able to see any of those so sorry if i missed your comments and super chats please also uh, support the show at logosmedia.com. Hit the contribute button up at the top. Also, you can hit the Patreon button there at the top uh, of the video so that uh, you can support us that way. That's a big help. Also, please subscribe and like the show and uh, tell your friends about us so that uh, we can continue to grow. Next week's show will be the 10-year anniversary show. I think. Woo. Woo! Wow. So I think the first show was in uh, was on October 28, 2008. Uh, we could do like the week after next is the 10th anniversary show for Hallow's Eve. I think that's how and that's a bit satanic. I don't know if I want to be associated with that specific night. I don't know. I'll think about it. We'll have to do something exposing could, the Satanists before we, you know, or for that kind could, of show. We could turn it upside down and invert it and turn it invert into something. Their, yeah. Invert their inversion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could do it. We, maybe we could do an episode exposing the Church of Satan and their one celebrated day a year, you know. Mm -hmm. Tell you why you shouldn't be taking your kids out for Halloween and costumes and this, uh, you know, this mock ritual that celebrates the murder of 70 million Europeans back in the Black Death days committed by the crypto Jews, and uh, they were accused for all of that and then fled to the New World and elsewhere to get away from the aftermath and those who were angry at them for doing it. Again, please support the show, logosmedia.com. Please hit the like, subscribe, etc. Hit the super chat. Hit the Patreon button. Caleb, what's your uh, subs or donation information? M-I-C-K dot C-A-L-E-B at gmail.com. And thank you so much. I appreciate everything. It really helps out a bunch. All right. And uh, that's a wrap, folks. Good night. Thank you so much. See you next week. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody.